Sunday the 14th of March is Mother's Day so today I'm going to show you how I made this simple Mother's Day card using watercolours, watercolour paper and a few other supplies. I will show you how I created the rose motif and then repeated that several times around the card and then how I blended all of the shapes together. So let's get on with the tutorial. Before we get started I want to say a few things about the paints that I'm using in today's session. Most of them are taken directly from the palette but there are a couple that I have mixed in a previous session where I was looking at flowers and practicing and preparing for making this card. So that session um, where I am planning out and just generally doodling with flowers and having a go at making different flower shapes if you click on the card above that will take you to that session where you can experiment more with making flower shapes and if you wanted to learn more about this palette set that I'm using which is the Winsor & Newton Cotman palette set there are also details of that in the one of the cards above you. You can obviously use any watercolour set that you like or even gouache is quite good for this. Um, so I'm starting by painting my first rose. I've started with a coil shape in the middle and then I'm gradually moving out. They shouldn't be too tidy, they should be quite loose. and I, The colours in the middle should be darker using less water and then you add more water as you move out because when you look at a rose as it catches the light on the outside it gets gradually lighter. Now on the edge of this rose I'm just adding an outline of the darker colour and blending that in. I'm now moving on to my second rose and I'm doing a different design here where I'm putting some little dots in the centre and then moving around that with the coil design. Now as I'm moving around on the outside what I'm doing is I'm starting with the fine point of the brush and then gradually swooping it around so we get that curved shape. That gives you more of the definition of the type of shape that you would have on your rose. And as I said with all of the rose shapes that you do, the inside of your rose should look darker. If you find that when it dries, it all dries a similar shade and it looks quite flat, don't worry, you can always go back and add darker tones later. So as I'm moving around, I'm adding more water so I get lighter tones and then I get to a point where I need to make a decision, am I going to finish my rose here? Also, don't worry if your roses are going off of the side of the page. That makes it look more natural. You want it to be going off of the page and giving it more of an impression at, at that it's going off of the page and it's giving you more depth. <clears throat> When you are ready to add your background colour, and I would suggest adding sap green, that's the colour I've added here. I haven't added any other colour to it like I did with some of the leaves in my previous clip. Um, I would wet down your watercolour paper first. Make sure that the edges of your flowers are dry. The reason for that is that if you don't, the green will run into the flowers. If it does, that's fine. That might be the effect that you're going for because this is quite a loose painting. But if you want the edges of the flowers to be clear and distinct from the background, I would suggest you wait for the flowers to dry and then make sure you wet down your background and add the green colour to it and it will absorb into those wet areas. Thank you. 
For the effect that I'm trying to create, which is quite a loose effect, I'm going to try and blend the roses together in the areas where they are quite close. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some water to the edges of both of the roses as they join and hopefully this will blend the colours together. Sometimes when you're working on a painting and you need to add detail it's very often better just to turn the whole painting around because then you can get to where you need to. Now obviously with this is quite tricky because I'm going to be painting it upside down but in actual fact with the planning when I looked at the composition it actually looked better with the roses at the top in that band across the top so um, I would suggest that if you are looking at a painting and you are thinking about you can't get to a particular angle just turn the painting around it makes a lot more sense. mentioned earlier sometimes when the roses dry you do have areas that will go much drier than others and we really want those roses to be darker in the center so as your roses dry just go back and check them out make sure that they aren't lighter in the center than on the outside and if they are just go back into them and add some darker tones to the center so they look more 3d I'm going to fill up the rest of the composition with background space I am going to fill the space firstly with water just make sure that you only put water on the spaces where you want to add green and then I will add the sap green and that will expand onto the background 
so that it goes towards the edges of the roses which will have now dried. If your roses are still wet or damp, the green paint will absorb onto those roses. So just be sure that when you're adding your paint, it only stays on the wet areas and that your roses are completely dry. Otherwise, that green will blend into that. That would look fine on a painting like this that has a loose feel to it. But just for future reference, if you are doing this on a background where you want your edges to be crisp, then obviously that wouldn't work. So now that my painting has dried, I have sketched in the lettering that I want to use for Happy Mother's Day um, before I start applying the pen. I just want to make sure I've got everything in the right place and that I've got my lettering perfect. Obviously, I've checked my spellings um, and now I'm now using a fine liner to go around the edges. And then I've got this calligraphy pen to go around and do the thicker areas.
once you have finished your writing and you're happy with your card design, you should now stick it to the back of some card or some paper that's been folded over with a glue stick and then press it down firmly. I usually, usually use a piece of paper on top just to make sure that I've pressed it down as firmly as possible and then obviously leave it to dry before giving your card to someone special. If you enjoyed this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions leave a comment below. Finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.